So, yeah, no, um, not my usual intro this week, uh, and I'm not going to have my uh, outro music, uh, I'm saying, n no fancy edits this week, just, it's been an emotional week for the world of entertainment because um, on Monday evening, UK time, uh, the great Stan Lee, one of the uh, founders of Marvel, uh, passed away on Monday morning, uh, US time, uh, so this podcast, this episode of the podcast is in memory of the great Stanley. My name is Kenzie Redshaw and I'm your host for this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast as always. Uh, I say it's been a, like I say it's been an emotional week for the world of entertainment. So, yeah, it's, uh, so, so things are going to be a bit more somber this week here, episode 28 of the uh, Trophy Achievement Podcast, um, so, let's just, well, let's just get into it, it's, um, uh, there's going to be no, like I say, there's going to be no, there's going to be no edits, no intro, no music, and there's going to be no points, no points in trophy section there uh, this week either, because that's going to that's going to wait till next week. Uh, and uh, shout out as always to Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as three ninety nine a month. Sign up today, get a twenty one day free trial, and you get three free game rentals. There's no late fees, so you can keep the game as long as you like, or keep it forever at a discounted price on the online store. It's, it's BoomerangRentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. So the biggest news story this week is the fact that PlayStation are not going to be at E3 next year, which is v which is very interesting in my book. So let's work out what it actually means. Sony Interactive Entertainment, currently riding high on sales of its PlayStation 4 gaming console, won't be hosting its annual press conference or showing up at all during next year's massive E3 Expo. The news was buried inside the Entertainment Software Association's announcement of the 2019 show that quoted competitors Nintendo and, and Microsoft. Sony confirmed their absence in a statement to Variety. As the industry involves, Sony Interactive Entertainment continues to look for inventive opportunities to engage the community. According to the statement, PlayStation fans mean the world to us, and we always want to innovate, think differently, and experiment with ways to delight gamers. As a result, we have decided not to participate in E3 in 2019. We are exploring new and familiar ways to engage our community in 2019 and can't wait to share our plans with you. This will be the first time in E3's 24 year history that PlayStation will not be attending the event. It is also the second major PlayStation event cancelled by the company in recent months. In September, Sean Layden, chairman of Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios, said the company wouldn't be hosting this year's PlayStation Experience, citing the lack, a lack of games to show. Now that we have Spider-Man out the door, we're looking down in 2019 to games like Dreams and Days Gone. But we wouldn't have enough to bring people all together in some location in North America to have that event. Layden said, we don't want to set expectations really high and then not deliver on it. PlayStation Experience started four years ago as a celebration for PlayStation's 20th anniversary as a way to bring fans together for a consumer event, according to Layden. The event expanded over the next few years as a place to give news updates. This year, though, this year, though Layden expressed that we have a lot of progress 
that we're making in our games, but also that there's not much to share at this point for upcoming titles. The same could be the same could be true for E3 2019, though that does raise concerns about the PlayStation 4 itself and a potential lack of upcoming titles. The timing also comes just a month after Sony CEO Kenichiro Yoshida confirmed that a successor to the PlayStation 4 is going to happen. At this point, what I can say is it's necessary to have a seek a seek next generation hardware. That's how you pronounce it. Yoshida stated. Yoshida declined to confirm whether or not the next PlayStation console will be called the PlayStation 5, which seems like the natural choice. A while, while consoles traditionally and are announced are traditionally, while console tr while consoles are traditionally announced at E3, PlayStation the PlayStation 4's announcement actually occurred at an event in New York City, and, and Microsoft's Xbox One was unveiled at the company's campus. In general, games, game consoles are facing stiffer competition from not just the traditional push and pull with the massive PC games market, but a growing mobile game market, which has exceeded $26 billion already in 2018. Kodera also said over the summer that he still sees potential in portable gaming and thinks it shouldn't be separated from console gaming, but seen as another way to experience gaming. As consumers find ways to gain beyond traditional gaming dedicated hardware, the development of such hardware naturally comes into question. Even more, the option of game streaming is becoming a more tangible reality. As Microsoft revealed with its game streaming tech project xCloud on Monday, in a world where you could potentially stream the same games on any device, wouldn't console choice become irrelevant? Ubisoft's Eve Gilmore stated back in June a prediction that streaming will be more accessible to players, making dedicated or expensive hardware less necessary. There will be one more console generation and then after that we will be streaming, all of us, Gilmore said. Now part of me is concerned regarding that because how are you going to stream games without any, without any internet connection? Streaming requires an internet connection. And if you can't afford an internet connection, how are you going to do any streaming? Um, uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee came out uh, today as well. Um... So, and IGN has an article here, 10 big changes from Pokemon Yellow to Pokemon Let's Go. And this is what we have. Alex Osborne on IGN. It's been 20 years since the launch of Pokemon Yellow in Japan. And in that time, the creature collecting franchise has evolved quite a bit. <laughs> Pun intended. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee re revisit the enhanced Pikachu-focused take on Pokemon Red and Blue. And while Game Freak's remake is largely faithful to the Game Boy Classic, not everything is the same. Here are 10 big changes from the yellow... From Pokemon Yellow to Pokemon Let's Go. First change, Pokemon Go Park. Much of Kanto in Let's Go is a spruced up version of what you remember from Pokemon Yellow, but fans will spot several changes to the overworld. Some big, some big, and others small. Most noteworthy is the Safari Zone north of Fuchsia City, which is no longer an explorable area where you can capture Pokemon. In Let's Go, it's essentially an entryway to Pokemon Go Park, an entirely new area where you can import creatures from Pokemon Go. Interesting. Number two, no gambling. Like the Safari Zone, the Rocket Game Corner has been significantly Has been, has been significantly stripped down in Let's Go. All of the slot machines have been replaced by arcade cabinets you can't interact with, which means there's no coin case and no gambling your way to earning a Porygon. That, poke that Pokemon can be obtained through a different means. Number three, Pokemon in different locations. In addition to Porygon, being in a different location, there's no, there's also no Eevee found in the Celadon condos. 
In fact, a number of creatures that you could obtain once by speaking to a specific NPC in yellow can now be found in the wild. While yes, you can still get a Bulbasaur Charmander and Squirtle in the same way that you found that you, in the same way that you find them in Pokemon Yellow, you can also find them roaming the Canton Wilderness. Number four, you can ride Pokemon. Remember the bike shop owner in Cerulean City? He's now a bike maniac who won't sell you a bike. <laughs> That's a bit cruel. That's right, you can't ride a bike in Pokemon Let's Go. But don't worry, it's been replaced by something arguably better. Now you can select any Pokemon from your party to follow you outside its Pokeball. And if it's a rideable Pokemon, you can hop on and traverse Kanto by land, sea or air. In some fast, fun and charming ways. Number five, secret techniques. A popular change introduced in Sun and Moon is also featured in Pokemon Let's Go, but in a slightly different form. That's right, we're talking about the removal of HMs. However, instead of using Pokeride, like in Sun and Moon, your Pikachu or Eevee will learn various secret techniques throughout your, the course of your adventure that effectively replace Fly, Surf, Flash, Cut, and Strength. Number six, I believe it is. Yeah, I believe it's number six. Uh, change one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, number six, a new rival, eh? Gary, the cocky grandson of Professor Oak, is not your rival in Pokemon Let's Go. Instead, the character who will challenge you through the, through your, throughout your journey is a kind and humble childhood friend. Instead of popping up to talk smack and give you a hard time, your rival will support you and even give you helpful items throughout your quest. However, this isn't to say some classic characters from the original games don't appear during your, during your journey across Kanto as well. Hmm... So chances are we could still come across Team Rocket at some point. Number seven, no more random battles. Ooh, okay. Perhaps the most significant change in Pokemon Let's Go is the absence of random battles. Instead, Pokemon are seen roaming the overworld, and when your character comes in contact with one, you enter a catching sequence akin to Pokemon Go. While there are still plenty of trainer battles with traditional turn-based style gameplay, where you can level up your Pokemon, your party will also gain experience when you successfully catch a Pokemon. Nice! And there's a little side note here. Um, for every uh, Pokemon review ever, Red and Blue, 10 out of 10 on IGN. Pokemon Stadium, 5 out of 10. Pokemon Yellow, 10. Hey you, Pikachu, 6 out of 10. Pokemon Snap, 7.8. Pokemon Snap on the Virtual Console, 7.5. Pokemon Pinball, 8 out of 10. Pokemon Stadium, 8.2. The Japanese version got a 5. Uh, then you've got Pokemon Gold and Silver, 10 out of 10. Pokemon Puzzle Challenge, 9 out of 10. Pokemon Puzzle League, 8.9. Pokemon Stadium 2, 7.5. Pokemon Crystal, 9. Ruby Sapphire, 9.5. Pinball Ruby and Sapphire, 8.8. .8. Pokemon Colosseum, 7.5. Emerald, 8. Fire Red Leaf Green, 9. Pokemon Dash, 5 out of 10. Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, 6.8. Troze, Pokemon Troze, 8, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, 6.5, Pokemon Ranger, 7.1, Diamond of Pearl, 8.5, Battle Revolution, 5, uh, on the Wii, po Battle Revolution on the DS, uh, Explorers of Darkness, 6.5, Shadows of, uh, Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Aelma, uh, Almia, 6.7, My Pokemon Ranch, 4 out of 10, Pokemon Platinum, 8.8, um, Explorers of Sky, 4.9, Pokemon Rumble, 6 out of 10, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, 8.5, Poker Park Wii Pikachu's Adventure, 7.5, 
Pokemon Major Guardian signs 7. Black and White, 9 out of 10. Rumble Blast, 6.5. Poké Park 2 Wonders Beyond, 6.5. Pokemon Conquest, 9 out of 10. Black and White, 2. 9.6. Mystery Dungeon, Gate to Infinity, 4.5. X and Y, 9. Battle Trose, again, uh, pro Battle Trose. Didn't I just cover that one earlier? Uh, oh, just Pokemon Trose, Pokemon. <laughs> Battle Trose, 7.5. Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, 7.8. Trading card game online, six out of ten. I've actually I've actually played it. Pokemon Tournament an eight. Pokemon Go seven. Sun and Moon a nine. Pokemon Tournament DX an eight out of ten. Ultra Sun Ultra Moon a nine. Detective Pikachu eight point two. Pokemon Quest a six. And let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee eight point three out of ten. It's the lowest one there four point five out of ten. Number eight, gym entry requirements. So here we go. Unlike in Pokemon Yellow and every prior Pokemon game, in order to challenge a gym in Pokemon Let's Go, you must meet a specific requirement. These requirements vary. For example, you may need to have a Pokemon of a specific type or one that has reached a certain level. A few gyms require rather unique requirements, which we won't spoil for you here. Number nine, no Pokemon PC. Pokemon researcher Bill is still in Let's Go, but in his PC, but his PC storage, which has been a staple in all the core Pokemon games, is nowhere to be found in Pokemon Let's Go. Instead, you have a Pokemon box in your inventory that can be accessed when you aren't in battle. While it makes things extremely convenient, having the ability to swap out Pokemon that have fainted or are low on HP and PP without having to visit a Pokemon Center lowers the difficulty considerably. Unless you want to do the Nuzlocke challenge. Now for those who don't know what the Nuzlocke challenge is, in the in the Pokemon games, um, you head to an area and you capture the first Pokemon you find. And from there, you have to keep that Pokemon. But if it faints, it is classed as dead and you have to release it. And the last change is later gen updates. Several changes and features that were added in the generations following Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow appear in Let's Go. Pokemon Let's Go. Not only can you choose the gender of your character, first introduced in Pokemon Crystal, you can outfit your character with different clothing options that you find throughout your journey. Added Pokemon types like Steel, Fairy, and Dark are featured in Pokemon Let's Go, as are some of the moves that were added in later generations. You will also face off against other trainers in double battles, be able to obtain a Lolan Pokemon, and even have the option of powering up some of your Pokemon with Mega Evolutions. Interesting. And with an 8.3 out of 10. Very interesting. Next up. Next up, uh, we've got Sunset Overdrive for PC officially confirmed, but it won't be unveiled until, well, today, in fact. So here we go. Major Nelson made it official on Twitter yesterday. Developer Insomniac Games has all... all right, so here we go. Major Nelson tweeted... Uh, Yesterday, say, check out tomorrow's This Week on Xbox, where, when we welcome Insomniac Games' Ted Price to talk about Sunset Overdrive coming to Windows 10 PC. Don't forget your can of overcharged Delirium XT. 
<laughs> Brilliant. Developer Insomniac Games also chimed in to have a little fun with the reveal, which will finally conclude with the most conclude the most pointless series of no comment email replies since Bethesda tried to convince the world that Walmart Canada was a figment of our collective imagination. And it says, tune in tomorrow to learn more about the best kept secret in games. <laughs> and now the launch trailer, and now the launch trailer has turned up on YouTube as well. As far as I can tell, it's the same as the Xbox One trailer, but with higher resolution textures and Windows 10 PC in the title. But I'm still gonna look at it anyway. Ready then for mature. Before this whole thing started, I just floated through life. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but my life didn't start until the world came to an end. Hordes of increasingly difficult enemies. Hey, hey, hey. Blam! I want to do something more fun. Badass hero customization. Kick ass! Mutually beneficial faction alive. I sense <laughs> some epic missions in my future. To battle! Insane something I quit. Together we'll take Bisco down. Or we won't, but we'll get some wicked respawn animations. <laughs> <laughs> Head overdrive. What a f up. Yeah. I meant you. Consume now. <laughs> ah, bother. Why did I do that? I'm so stupid sometimes. I'm so stupid. So uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, now, Fortnite's biggest competitor in the Battle Royale uh, scene, and no, I'm not counting Black Ops or Battlefield, because they're just riding the wave, they're just cashing in. Anyway, what we have is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is coming to PS4 next month. Excellent. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is finally coming to PS4. Sony announced the news today in a new trailer, which you can uh, announce in a new trailer. The video reveals a release date of December the 7th, which is literally just a few weeks away. PUBG will launch on PS4 with all three maps, Erangel, Miramar, and Sanhok, Developer PUBG Corp states the PlayStation version will contain all major features, ranked system, event mode, achievements, and much more. Pre-orders are live now, with bundles ranging from, ranging from £25 here in the UK to £50, which is 30 to 60 US dollars or 40 to 85 Australian dollars. Depending on how many in-game coins you want, and whether you desire a survivor pass. All those who do buy the game in advance of launch will receive two platform exclusive items a Nathan Drake outfit from Uncharted and Ellie's backpack from The Last of Us PUBG Corp also states the game is enhanced for PS4 Pro systems including support for HDR lighting and on capable TV sets 
PUBG first came to PC in March 2017 as part of Steam's early access program. It later came to Xbox One as an Xbox game preview title and launched fully on those platforms in December 2017 and September 2018, respectively. Microsoft announced that a PUBG would be among 15 games coming to Xbox Game Pass in November. A PS4 version has been heavily rumoured for some time and a PlayStation port was listed by the South Korean ratings board in September. Before that, developer PUBG Corp had stated that it wanted its hit Battle Royale game to come to every platform. Maybe you see, maybe we could see it coming to the Nintendo Switch at some point? Who knows? The Xbox One version was successful at launch, selling more than 1 million units in the first 48 hours, despite still being in beta at that point. Since that time, PUBG Corp has supported the shooter with, multi with a multitude of updates, including new maps, weapons, and modes, and you will be able to find the Xbox One version on sale this Black Friday. And I'll be going into those Black Friday, uh, I'll be going into those Black Friday uh, deals on Thursday next week. So yeah, I'll be doing I'll be doing my podcast on Thursday instead of Friday uh, next week because next Friday is Black Friday and I'm gonna try and sneak a couple of Black Friday deals. Some news on Smash Bros Ultimate now, and we've got the DLC roster already decided. So maybe you want to hold off on the online petitions. We want Waluigi's though! So here we go. Smash Super Smash Bros Ultimate will spend roughly a year after its launch, adding more characters, stages, and music tracks via DLC. Don't waste time stay starting that letter campaign for Dixie Kong though. Director says... The director... Masahiro Sakurai says the roster is already locked. So he says Super Smash Bros. Ultimate DLC's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate DLC lineup is now complete, Sakurai said in a tweet. This time the selection was made entirely by Nintendo. I decide if I decide if we can create a fighter based on their selection and then come up with the plan. The phrasing does note that the selections were already made this time, leaving the door open for another series of DLC content to follow that could include fan requests. The community has been very vocal about some of their favourite characters, including Waluigi, Banjo-Kazooie and others. Of course, he could have simply been contrasting this time with last time, meaning the last Smash Bros game. Six downloadable characters are coming in all. The first Piranha Plant will be available for free for everyone who purchases and registers this, the game by January 31st, 2019. He'll come later as a purchasable character. Five more fighters will be added in DLC packs that are bundled with an additional stage and some new music tracks. These packs will cost $6 a piece and a Fighters Pass bundle will get you all of them for $25. Buying the Fighters Pass will also get you an outfit based on Rex from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. The announcement of Piranha Plant and the DLC Fighters came alongside the last two roster reveals in the main game, Ken and Incineroar. That announcement also debuted the, the final mode, Spirits, which has you take on a series of challenges to earn equivable character buffs. That, Ninten that Nintendo Direct mentioned that the DLC wasn't locked down yet, so the character selections may be very recent. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate releases on December 7th for Nintendo Switch. Well, that was about that. So the DLC has already been locked in. Okay. An article on Tech Radar now for uh, Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Release dates, news, and rumors. Here we go. We first discovered a Harry Potter RPG was in the works when Redditor Vape This Bro leaked footage of the game, claiming he was shown it as part of market research. Although the footage was quickly removed by Warner Brothers, it was up long enough for fans to identify Hogwarts, various creatures, and a character creator. Pokemon Go developer Niantic later confirmed 
in a tweet that the title of the official Harry Potter RPG is Harry Potter Wizards Unite and the game will release in 2019. We've gathered all the news and rumours about the leaked Harry Potter RPG in this handy guide. Here's everything you need to know. Let's cut to the chase. When is it? What, well, what is it? An, R an RPG title based on the Harry Potter franchise. When can I play it? 2019. What can I play it on? We're hoping PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. But Niantic being involved suggests it could be a mobile game. Niantic has confirmed Harry Potter Wizards Unite will release in 2019. How to enlist. You can enlist for Harry Potter Wizards Unite now through the game's official website. Simply fill in your date of birth and email address and the Ministry promises to keep you updated on the unfolding calamity. Well, I think I shall do that just now. Eyes peeled, ears open, wands ready. The following information is now officially muggle-proof. Sorry, you are not able to sign up for emails at this time. Oh, consign it. Here we go. Harry Potter Wizard Unite News. Story. The game's official website gives us details of uh, the overarching narrative. Please resist the urge to panic. Traces of magic are appearing across the muggle world without warning and in a rather chaotic manner. We worry it is only a matter of time before even the most incurious muggles catch wind of it. We call on all witches and wizards to help contain the calamity or risk the worst of times since you know who. Brush off on your spells, get your wand ready and enlist immediately. Wizards Unite rumours. BBC reporter Lizzo Lizzo Mzimba Mzimba tweeted about his acknowledgement of the project revealing the mysterious RPG may be called Harry Potter Magic Wakened however other titles including Magic Forever are in the mix. He also hinted other Harry Potter titles could be on the way. Dark or Light according to a description with accompanied leak booted with, with, which accompanied the leak booted somebody should pre- I say this every week, they should proofread these articles. You will be able to choose from eight character classes and align yourself with either good or evil. Not developed by Rocksteady. Following the leaked footage, fans speculated that the project may be in development by British studio Rocksteady Games, who are also owned by Warner Brothers. However, a source on Rocksteady confirmed to Eurogamer that this is not the case. What would we like to see? Classes. A lot of Harry Potter fans, including ourselves, just want to play roleplay as a Hogwarts student, warts and all. <laughs> that means attending classes with, with, the, with the quirky professors and aiming to ace your owls. However, this game doesn't look like it'll be that, instead focusing on adventure. A brand new story. Although not all fans will agree, it would be nice to move away from the characters of Harry, Hermione and Ron and instead focus on brand new characters with a different story. Currently, we don't know if Harry and Powell will be will play a part in the RPG or what size of role that will be. Houses. A Hogwarts experience is not legit until you're sorted into your house by the sorting hat. It would be a real oversight not to include this and hopefully your house will affect how the story unfolds. An interactive open world Hogwarts. We're reaching a bit, but a living and breathing Hogwarts to explore would be bliss. It would essentially allow fans to inhabit the world they've read about and watched in the films. Very interesting. There's been not there's been uh, there's been another leak in the form of a new Mortal Kombat game. Mortal Kombat 11 leaked before expected reveal. So this is on PSU.com. So, here we go. Mexican voice actor and director Eduardo Garza, who has lent his talent to the likes of Lucio in Overwatch and Krillin in Dragon Ball, may have let slip that Mortal Kombat 11 is in the works. 
In a tweet sent out today, translated from Spanish, it reads, Well, finally, I can confirm that the professionals of Pink Noise... Pink Noise... How on earth do you pronounce that? Pink Noise Studios. I'll just go with Pink Noise Studios. I've decided to remove my characters from Mortal Kombat 11. How sad that a company that wanted a lot ends up making decisions that affect both you, that affect both you and the consumers. Goodbye, Kong Lao and Reptile. Well, oh well. So we're not going to have Kung Lao and Reptile in uh, Mortal Kombat now. <sighs> I am now sad. The company that he has tweeted to on Twitter is Pink Noise Studios. Apparently that company has removed him from the Spanish dubbing of Mortal Kombat 11, which has yet to be officially announced. Garza was supposed to be voicing both Reptile and Kung Lao. This now ties nicely with growing rumours that Mortal Kombat 11 will be announced at the Game Awards 2018. I'll get into that one shortly. Some fans are speculating that this is a typo and what Gaza is actually referring to is Mortal Kombat XL. Others disagree. English translation. Why would... Why would Lalo remove two characters that are already doubled at 100%? The game has been out for years, so I doubt it's Mortal Kombat XL. The fact that Mortal Kombat 11 development... Again, somebody should proofread these articles before putting them up. The fact that Mortal Kombat 11 is, a de is in development is no secret. Earlier this month, at the Mo at the Mo Game Con event in Missouri, two martial artists doing mocap for the studio confirmed that they were working on Mortal Kombat 11. However, fans have been waiting for a long time for its official reveal. The latest Mortal Kombat game from NetherRealm Studios was released in 2015, with an XL edition released a year later. Stay tuned for the Game Awards on December 6th to see more to see if more news drops. Well. You'll definitely see me reacting to the Game Awards. Speaking of which, segue! Here we go. All of the 2018 Game Awards nominees. Just double check. Yep. So. So, here we go. The nominees have been announced for 20. 18's Game Awards. This year, Sony's Santa Monica's God of War and Rockstar Games' Red Dead Redemption 2 are the two frontrunners, locked neck and neck at eight nominations each, including Game of the Year contenders, including Assassin's Creed. Well, other, other Game of the Year contenders include Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Celeste, Spider-Man, and Monster Hunter World. Damn, that's a good lineup. I would probably say God of War is going to be the game of the year. I think God of War is going to win that one. Okay. Fortnite snagged four nominations of its own, including Best Ongoing Game and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Oh, for goodness sake. Destiny 2 Forsaken and Detroit Become Human each got three nominations. I just hope that Call of Duty never wins anything. Phones can fans can vote for their favorites through the official site, which I'm going to go into shortly. As always, the awards show will feature exclusive world premieres and musical performances. You can purchase tickets 
starting at $70. The show is once again being organised and hosted by gaming industry veteran Jeff Keighley. Keighley will also produce a limited podcast series in partnership with Spotify to take a closer look at the best game music of the year. A total of 68 media partners, including GameSpot, are voting to decide the winners of the main categories. You can check out the full list of nominations below. Ah, the tagline says worlds will change, eh? Hmm, interesting. And it says here on the website, this year more than 100 games and individuals have been nominated for the Game Awards. Choose your favourites below. You can vote once every 24 hours, and if you share your vote, it receives an extra boost in our winner formula. Winners will be announced live on December 6th at the Game Awards. So here we go. So I'm going to start from the bottom and work all the way up to the top. Content Creator of the Year, Dr. Lupo, Myth, Ninja, Pokimane, and Willy Rex. I'm going to go with Ninja. Ah, sign in. Of course. Of course I've got to do stuff like this. But that's fine. I can live with that. Confirm vote. Right, next up, best esports moment. C9 comeback win in Triple OT versus FaZe in E League. G2 beating NRG in League of Legends Worlds. KT versus IG base race League of Legends Worlds. OG's massive upset of LGD Dota 2 finals. Sonic Fox side switch against G1 in DBZ at Evo. We'll go for that one. We'll go for the DBZ moment. Best esports host Alex Golden Boy Mendez, Alex Machine Richardson, Anders Bloom. If G show show shokes however you pronounced it Deputare and Paul Red Eye Chelona I'll go for Alex Richardson Here we go Best Esports event E-League Major Boston 2018, EVO 2018, League of Legends World Championships, Overwatch League Grand Finals, and the International 2018. Since I follow the International every year, I will go with the International. Best Esports Coach. Bok Reaper Hang Yu for Cloud9. Christian P. Passarel, Passarel, Banas, Banashonu for OG, Danny Zonic Sorensen for Astrails, Dylan Falco for Fnatic, Jacob Yamto Cannon Mebdi for Team Vitality, and Janko YNK Paunovic for MIBR. I'll go with Cloud9. Best esports team. Here we go. Astrails from CSGO. Cloud9 for League of Legends. Fnatic League of Legends. London Spitfire 
for the Overwatch League. And OG for Dota 2. I'm going to go with London Spitfire because Team GB all the way. Britain, let's go. Best esports player presented by Omen by HP. Dominic Sonic Fox McLean or Echo Fox. Hajime Tokido Taniguchi. Jian Yuzi Zihao. Royal Never Give Up. Alexander Simple with a one. Kostil, Kostiliev, Natus Vincere, and Sung Hyun J. Joe Nak Bang, New York Excelsior. I mean, just for that, New York Excelsior, I'll go for that. And here we go best esports game. CSGO, Dota 2, Fortnite, League of Legends, Overwatch. That was a no-brainer. Let's go with Overwatch. Best debut indie game. Donut, Donut County, Florence, Moss, The Messenger, Yoku's Island Express. I think I'll go with... Actually... Go with Florence. Some of these games I definitely need to check out. Best students game. Combat 2018. Dash Qu Quasar. Jera. Lif. And RE Charge. Hmm. I'll go with RE Charge. Best multiplayer game, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, Avoid Like the Plague, Destiny 2 Forsaken. It's an expansion, it shouldn't even be allowed. Fortnite, Monster Hunter World, and Sea of Thieves. Fortnite's going to take that one. Ah, here we go. Best sports racing game, FIFA 19, nope. Forza Horizon 4. Mario Tennis Aces, NBA 2K19, Pro Evolution Soccer 2019. I'm going to go with Forza Horizon 4. Soundtrack in that game as well is a freaking amazing. Best strategy game, The Banner Saga 3, Battletech, Frostpunk, Into the Breach, and Valkyria Chronicles 4. I think we'll go with the last option. Valkyria Chronicles 4. Best Family Game, Mario Tennis Aces, Nintendo Labo, Overcooked 2, Starlink Battle for Atlas, and Super Mario Party. I think Super Mario Party might nab this one. But then Nintendo Labo could be an option as well. Best Fighting Game, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, Dragon Ball Fighters, Soul Calibur 6, and Street Fighter 5 Arcade Edition. Street Fighter V should have had an arcade edition at launch back in 2016. You severely disappoint me, Capcom. I'm going to go with Dragon Ball Fighters. So fast paced and just so awesome. Best role playing game Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age, Monster Hunter World, Nino Kuni 2, Revenant Kingdom, Octopath Traveler, and Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. I think Nino Kuni 2 has got this one in the bag this year. I'm going to refer back to this episode of the podcast and see how many of the predictions I got right. Best action adventure game, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'm going to go with Spider-Man because I've been enjoying it more than God of War. Best action game, Avoid Like the Plague, Dead Cells, Avoid, Far Cry 5, and Mega Man 11. Far Cry, no. Destiny, no. Call of Duty, absolutely no. So I'm going to go with Mega Man. I'm going old school, baby.
Best VR slash AR game. Astrobot Rescue Mission, Beat Saber, Firewall Zero Hour, Moss, and Tetris Effect. Now we'll go with Tetris Effect on this one. That one I'm definitely intrigued by. I definitely want to play it. Best mobile game. Donut County, Florence, Fortnite, PUBG Mobile, Reigns Game of Thrones. And we're going to go with Fortnite again. So wait, Florence is on mobile? Why didn't anybody tell me this? Anyway. Best independent game. Celeste, Dead Cells, Into the Breach, Return of Oberdin, and The Messenger. Uh, I think we'll go with Celeste. Games for Impact. 1111 Memories Retold, Celeste, Florence, Life is Strange 2 Episode 1. Why not just have the entire game? Miss the Missing, JJ Macfield and the Island of Memories. And we're going to go with Florence. I definitely want it. I definitely want to try this Florence out. Best performance. Oh goody, here we go. Brian DeChart as Connor in Detroit Become Human. Christopher Judge as Kratos in Boy, you will nominate, you will vote for me. Boy. <laughs> My best Kratos impression. Boy. Here we go. Melisanthi Mahout as Cassandra in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Roger Clark as Arthur Morgan in Dead Redemption 2, Yui Lowenthal as Peter Parker in Marvel's Spider-Man. You'll do! All very worthy contenders. I still need to get around to playing Red Dead Redemption 2, come to think of it. At this point, I'm going to need to wait until January to do my top 10s of 2018. Best audio design. Avoid Call of Duty like the plague. Forza Horizon 4, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, damn it! What do I go for that one? Oh, who do I go for for that one? And Forza Horizon 4. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love my racing games. I am not going against them. Best score music pre presented by Sports Spotify. Celeste, God of War. Marvel Spider-Man, Nino Kuni 2, Octopath Traveler, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, son of a... Oh, come on! Come on! Why has this year been so damn good? I'm going to go... with God of War on this one. Bear McCreary. He's the same guy that does the music for The Walking Dead! Which reminds me, I need to watch this week's episode. Best art direction, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, God of War, Octopath Traveler, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Return of Obra the Obra Dinn. Ooh! Actually, let's go for this one. Let's go for that one. Best narrative, Detroit Become Human, God of War, Life is Strange Episode 1, Marvel Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2. Has anybody actually completed Red Dead Redemption 2? It only came out like three weeks ago. I'm going to go for Spider-Man. Just because, oh my word. I would rather choose Spider-Man over God of War. There, I said it. Best game direction, a way out. Nope, I was really disappointed by that. Detroit Become Human, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay, here we go. Game direction. I am going to go with God of War because it's like everything. It's like the entire... If you went through the entire game in one go, it's like you're going through it in just one take. Best ongoing game, Destiny 2 Forsaken. Huh. Fair play. Fortnite, No Man's Sky. Nope. Overwatch, possibly. Rainbow Six Siege. Nope! Fortnite all the way!
And now, the big one. Game of the Year. And the nominations are Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Celeste, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Monster Hunter World, and Red Dead Redemption 2. A lot of people are going to go with God of War. So I'm going to follow suit. So yeah, again, I'm going to fall back on this. So that's... Thirty predictions. Holy moly. Thirty. Thirty predictions. How many of those am I, how many of those am I gonna get right? We'll need to stay tuned uh, on December sixth when the game awards go live across the world. Until then, hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did as always. Hit the thumbs up, and if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter day scenes notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Um, got my previous video on the left, podcast playlist on the right, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for uh, The Apprentice. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. Stay faithful as always.